In this demonstration, you're going to learn how to label your polygon layers. So we're going to be working with a parcel layer, which I've got displayed on my map uh, inside my ArcGIS Pro project. You can see my parcel layer here. There's some other layers here, but I've turned those off. Right now, map is selected, but as soon as I select the parcel layer, you'll see that the feature layer contextual tab becomes active. That has three tabs, appearance, labeling, and data. Labeling is the tab that we're interested in here. So labels are basically text that gets placed uh, uh, in relation to each feature. Um, the text by default that gets placed is going to come from an attribute field. So if we look at the parcel attribute table, by right clicking on the layer and selecting attribute table, these are the attribute fields associated with that parcel layer. And I've got a lot of different fields that I could pick from here. But just to kind of keep things simple, we'll focus on doing our labels with this owner name field. All right. So... And just by coincidence, that's the field that's been selected here uh, for uh, under field, under my labeling tab. So um, the owner names are what are going to be placed as text for each of these land parcels. A couple things uh, have to be done for the labels to turn on. You'll want to make sure that this checkbox for labeling features in this class is turned on. Every uh, layer in your table of contents can have multiple label classes. Uh, every layer is going to have it one, at least one label class called class one. But you'll notice under, uh, under class one here, you have the ability to create multiple label classes or additional label classes. What those allow you to do is to allow you to define different uh, labeling styles for different circumstances, right? So as I'm, uh, when I'm zoomed at, a current, at the current level, I might want to label it in one way. And as I zoom in or zoom out, I might want to label it a little bit differently. And so those label classes allow me to create different classes of labels, which are just different uh, styles, so to speak, uh, for, for the different labels uh, at different scales. Or you know, there's other, contact, there's other um, parameters that you can introduce as well. But essentially, these label classes allow us to define multiple ways of uh, labeling a layer in different circumstances. Now, the second thing you have to do is to enable labeling, and uh, you do this with a little label button. You'll notice right now it has kind of a grayish background indicating that uh, the toggle is turned off, and that's why you don't see any labels at this point. So if I click on the label button, that initiates the toggle. You'll notice how it turns blue. So uh, I've toggled labels on, and then at this point, I'm going to get the labels that are going to show up uh, in, my, uh, in my map for that particular layer. Now, you'll notice not every feature has been uh, labeled. Uh, most of the ones in the center of the screen have been, but you'll notice that some of these uh, parcels have not been labeled, right? and that's because there's some sort of conflict. And conflict can, can occur um, in different ways. right? If there's um, conflict for the placement of labels between uh, multiple uh, features, then the, those features that have conflict for the labeling are going to be tossed out. So you're not always going to see every feature being labeled. Um, it just kind of depends on, on how you define the parameters. Now you can also um, control uh, or, or enable or disable uh, labeling for a feature by going to the table of contents. In the table of contents, there's a button here for, called list by labeling. And here's my, my layers, parcels, and class one. Those roughly correspond to what you see here. So if I turn off class one, you'll notice that it also turns it off up here in the, uh, in, the, in the labeling tab. Same thing if I click the checkbox for parcels, that's essentially toggling uh, that, uh, that label button uh, on and off, and I can turn it back on as I need to. So essentially doing the same thing. There's not, not, nothing really different that it's doing there. It's just different ways of doing the same thing. So you'll notice that uh, the owner name field is uh, being used for the labels for each of the features. Um, if we go to the text symbol section, you'll notice you have multiple ways of defining the labels that are going to appear here. Uh, lots of different options that you can uh, select from. I'm going to keep it pretty simple here. I'm going to go with the default, which was uh, to use uh, a Tahoma font. But again, you have multiple options here. There's a lot of different options that you could apply in terms of the, the font style that you want to use. And you just, just select what you want to use here. I'll keep it a size six here, but you may want to play with that, make it larger, make it smaller. You might want to change the color uh, of the labels. Uh, you can also make it bold or regular. And then under, under label placement, you have different options. This is a gallery of options. Uh, land parcel probably makes the most sense here, since we are dealing with land parcels. 
But you'll notice that we have things, uh, we have water polygons, right? Those are not going to apply very well here, but they might if I was working with the floodplain layer, right? Those might make a lot more sense uh, if I was labeling the floodplain layer. But in this case, because I'm dealing with land parcels, that probably makes the most sense. It's just going to redraw it here. Now, so those are the main label placement properties. Now, you can uh, drill down into additional properties for your labels by going to the label uh, uh, class pane. And the way that we initiate that is to find the layer in the, in the table of contents and right click on it, select labeling properties. That initiates the label class pane. And there's a lot going on here. We're gonna primarily focus on this position tab. Um, I've got other demonstrations that cover uh, the class tab, which allows you to define label expressions, SQL queries, visibility ranges, so for this particular demo, I'm going to focus in primarily on the position tab. All right, and the position tab has three buttons, um, position, fitting strategy, and conflict resolution. All right, position is the one that uh, you're going to use most often, right? This is what helps you define the position, position parameters for each of those labels. So if I open up placement, you'll see that I've already selected land parcel at the top here, so that's why placement is, is defined as land pl parcel placement down here in my label class pane. But I've got some additional options I can define here as well. You'll notice I can define that I want the labels to be horizontal, which is the way they are now, or straight or curved. So for example, if I select curved, still gonna do a land parcel placement, but it's going to curve uh, those, uh, those labels. Now, it doesn't look great here, right? But uh, depending upon your data, it might make more sense to curve the data inside the polygon. And we can also do straight in the polygon. Make some changes, right? That might make more sense. Maybe it looks better. Um, or I could do horizontal on the polygon, which was the default here. All right, so that, uh, those are the, the placement properties. Uh, you can also do orientation. Uh, we don't have any graticules here. Well, we do, but I'm, I'm not gonna go into that here. But this allows you to orient your labels uh, to a graticule a little bit beyond uh, the scope of what we're trying to do here. You can also add leader lines in some cases. In this case, uh, they're grayed out. And you can spread your labels out uh, as needed as well. Uh, but typically what you're working with on that position tab is, is these placement um, options. Now, if we move over to the fitting strategy uh, button, what this does is that there are multiple options here, including stack, overrun, reduction of size, abbreviations. All of these parameters are meant to ensure that you get as many labels placed as possible. And remember I said earlier that if there's conflict uh, between features or between the labels for features, that those labels just are not placed, right? And so, now, there's different reasons why a label may not be here. Maybe we just don't have a value here for this particular parcel or for this particular parcel. But more than likely, what's happened is that there's some sort of conflict here, right? There's a conflict between labels uh, on some of these different features that surround it. And so if there's conflict, then um, one or more labels are just not going to get placed. And so these options allow me to define different ways of ensuring that labels ultimately get placed. Now, you'll notice by default, stacking is turned on. Stacking is what allows you to, to, to spread um, your, um, your label out across multiple lines. So in this case, Dillard Texas Operating Limited Partnership. You'll notice it, how it's spread across four lines. That's stacking, right? If we didn't have stacking, then what it would do is it would essentially make sure that you only had a single line uh, of text. So if I turn stacking off, then everything becomes one line. Now, when we do that, of course, we introduce more conflict. So this particular parcel that had four lines because it was such a long uh, uh, piece of text, it, it no longer is capable of being placed because there's some sort of conflict probably between this feature and this feature in terms of the, of the labels. So stacking allows you to ensure that more labels get placed. Now, it may not be what you like aesthetically, but it ensures that more labels get placed. Now, there's lots of different options for stacking, right? We can choose best and we can constrain it in different ways. You can add stacking operators. You can define how many lines you want to spread it across. So a lot that you can do here, but the whole idea behind stacking is just to allow your labels to be spread across multiple lines. And in doing so, you typically are going to get more features placed than you would otherwise. Uh, you also have the ability to overrun. So by default, it's going to try to place those labels inside the polygon. But 
you can allow some overrun here, right? And so what overrun would do would, would be to allow those labels to overrun their feature. So that would allow them to go outside the feature in order to place that label, right? So that, that's maybe something you wanna add in. You can also reduce the size. So you can reduce the font size uh, as needed. Uh, and this includes font size reduction as well as font width compression. So this is just, uh, just another way of compressing the size of those uh, of those pieces of text so that you can get more of those uh, those labels placed on the map. You can also add abbreviations and there are different ways you can add abbreviations but you know so for example you might take the word partnership and, and abbreviate that some way or limited you might want to, to, to take that word and, and abbreviate that in some way and so doing those types of things allows you to get more uh, features labeled. Now down at the bottom we have different uh, we have a strategy order so by default the strategy ordering is going to be stacking followed by overrun font compression font reduction and abbreviation but you might want to focus more on abbreviation so you might move it all the way to the top here and what that would do is it would first use abbreviation uh, in its uh, in its fitting strategy and then it would use stacking right? so this is just uh, the strategy ordering that's going to be used um, in order to attempt to get as many uh, features labeled as possible. Because again, keep in mind, if there's conflict somewhere, then you're going to get um, certain features that are just not going to be labeled. And then under conflict resolution, a few things you want to be aware of here, uh, removing duplicate labels, right? You have the, the option here of, of not removing duplicate labels or removing all or removing from, from within a fixed distance. Um, other things you can do here, you can add buffers to those features, which is just sort of an imaginary buffer that goes around that feature. Um, in a lot of cases, you don't want to add this because that further constrains how many labels you're going to get, be able to get placed uh, onto that map. Uh, but there's other things here, minimum feature size. So you might want to define a minimum feature size uh, in order to try to place a label. So if, if you've got a you know, got a big discrepancy in the size of some of your features, you might want to just ensure that only the large features get labeled. And so you could introduce a medium, minimum feature size uh, that would cut out on some of the features that get labeled. Uh, and there's other things as well here. Um, you know, you can introduce feature weighting to, uh, to introduce interior and boundary type weights. Um, you can ensure that unplaced labels automatically or never get removed. Uh, typically, you don't want to do this because you're going to wind up with a very cluttered looking map uh, where every single layer label gets placed regardless of, of any of your uh, fitting strategies. All right, so that's, uh, that's it for this particular demonstration. Thank you for joining me.